One of the drawbacks of using IRR as a way to evaluate investments is that if your project has multiple IRRs, then you don't know which IRR is the right one to use, right? So if your project has an IRR of let's say 30%, but then your uh, calculations show that your project also has an IRR of say 5%, it's not immediately clear which one is the right one to use. And so that's the problem of having multiple IRRs. Fortunately, there's a calculation called the modified internal rate of return, which can be done in order to resolve this multiple IRR problem. Before we get into this calculation, very quickly recall that a project will have multiple IRRs if the cash flows of the investment are switching signs multiple times. So take an example, let's suppose that your project has an upfront investment of $1,000. Now let's suppose that your project in year one will generate $200 and then maybe $800 and then maybe $700. Now you don't have any problems here, why? Because the number of times your cash flows are switching signs is just one right so you're going from negative to a positive that's one sign switch and then all cash flows are positive so one is the number of times your cash flows are switching signs which means there will be one irr so you don't have a multiple irr problem in this situation in fact this is an example of a project which has conventional cash flows now if we change things a little bit let's suppose that this 800 let's suppose it's a negative in other words your investment has some outflow associated with it and time period two, well, that changes things because now your cash flows are switching signs three times. First, going from a negative to a positive, that's one. Going from a positive to a negative, that's two. And then going from a negative to a positive, that's three. So in general, though not always, the number of IRRs equals the number of times the cash flows are switching signs. And what we're talking about here is that you can try and resolve this issue by calculating something called the modified internal rate of return. And so now what I'm going to do is show you how you can do that calculation. So consider, for example, the following project, which requires an upfront investment of $500. It will yield an inflow of 1150 at the end of year one, but then there will be an outflow of $600 at the end of year two, which is the final year of the project. Now, in this case, the number of IRRs that you will get is two because cash flows are switching signs twice, going from a negative to a positive and then going from a positive to a negative. In fact, if I do this calculation over here, where I, where I do equal to IRR, and then if I highlight these cells right here, and then if the first IRR I guess is rather low, say negative 0 0.5, uh, so negative 50%, uh, the IRR of the project comes out to negative 20%. Now, if I do repeat the same exercise, so I do equal to IRR, again, pick the same cash flows, but this time the IRR that I guess is rather high, let's say one, so 100%, uh, the IRR formula over here converges to 50%. In other words, this project has two IRRs, negative 20% and 50%, which is problematic because let's suppose your discount rate is 20%, then based on these, you don't know whether this is a good or bad project. Negative 20% suggests that this is a bad project, but 50% suggests that this is a good project because 50% is more than 20%, so you don't know what to do. Fortunately, there's something called the modified internal rate of return that we can calculate. Now, there are three different approaches to calculating modified internal rate of return. The first is referred to as the discounting approach. The discounting approach basically says the following. It says, look, if you have some upfront investment or outflow, that's fine. Keep the inflow the way it is, and then any subsequent outflows, just calculate their present value or basically discount them so that in the end, all the outflows are basically calculated at time period zero in present value terms. So this 916.67, this is basically the same 500 over here, but then I discount this 600 at the discount rate of 20%. So effectively, we're saying that in present value terms, we're spending 916.67.
and then getting 1150 at the end of year one, notice that at the end of year two, we're getting nothing. Why? Because this 600 is already accounted for in this number over here. So modified IRR is nothing but calculating the IRR of this modified of this modified cash flow stream. And the nice thing about this modified cash flow stream is that there is only one sign switch. You're going from a negative to a positive, and that's it. Notice that zero is neither a positive nor a negative number, so this doesn't count. So you're going from negative to a positive, one sign switch, which means one IRR. And so if I highlight all these numbers, and now if I calculate the IRR of this, the, this cash flow stream, I get 25.45. Now, another way in which we can calculate MIRR is using something called the reinvestment approach. The reinvestment approach is similar in spirit to the discounting approach in the sense that we are trying to revise or modify our original cash flows in a way so that we only have one sign switch happening in cash flows. But the way the reinvestment approach accomplishes this is a little bit different. It says, look, keep outflows the way they are, so the, at least the initial investment, keep it the way it is, and then if you get any inflows in the middle, just reinvest them at the rate at which you expect to reinvest these cash flows. So let's assume that you can reinvest at your opportunity cost of capital, which is 20%. What that really implies is that at the end of year one, effectively, you're not getting anything, rather at the end of year two, which is the last year of the project, you're spending 600, which is the original cash flow, but then you're also getting the future value or the grown value of 1150 at the reinvestment rate. And so notice that by the end of year two, therefore, you will have a net inflow of 780, which is basically 11520 grown at 20% minus the 600 over here. And so the reinvestment approach to calculating MIRR is just to calculate the IRR of this modified cash flow stream, which if you do the math comes out to 24.90. Now there is yet another variation of calculating MIRR, which you can think of as the combination approach. As the name suggests, the combination approach is a combination of the discounting approach and the reinvestment approach. It works as follows. It says, look, if you have any outflows that are happening, bring them all back to the present or discount them to the present. That sounds very much like what you were doing in the discounting approach. And then if you have any inflows, reinvest them and take them out all the way to the end of the life of the project, which is similar to what you were doing in the reinvestment approach. And so in the combination approach, therefore, the timeline would look like this, where at time period zero, you will have the present value of these outflows, which is 916.67. The inflow of 1150 that you were getting at the end of year one, we are saying, look, don't account for that over here, rather grow it all the way out to the end of year two, which is the last year of the project, which means that at the end of year two, you're getting 1380. Notice that you don't have any negative 600 happening here anymore because that's already accounted for in this negative 916.67. And so now the combination approach to calculating the MIRR is to calculate the IRR IRR of this modified cash flow stream, which gives you 22.70. So three different approaches to calculating MIRR, where each approach is again trying to accomplish the same thing, modify the cash flows so there's only one sign switch. Now fortunately there is an Excel functionality called MIRR, which as the name suggests stands for Modified Internal Rate of Return. And in this case, if you highlight the original cash flows of your project, right, so these are the values, then the Excel asks you two additional questions. What is your financing rate? And what is your reinvestment rate? Now, financing rate is the rate at which you borrow funds to invest. So put simply, this is the rate at which you discount your cash outflows, whereas reinvestment rate is the rate at which you reinvest your inflows. 
Uh, so the financing rate is the rate that applies to discounting of outflows, whereas reinvestment rate applies to the rate at which you are reinvesting your inflows. In the example above, we have assumed financing rate and the reinvestment rate to be the same, which is 20%. And so we'll continue with that. So we do 0 0.20 is the financing rate because that is the rate at which we were discounting all our outflows. And the reinvestment rate is also 0.20% in this example, because that is the rate at which we were reinvesting our inflows of like 1150 and so if you do this calculation excel returns 22.70 which basically is the mirr that you got from the combination approach so if you were wondering which of these three approaches does excel use to calculate mirr well mirr in excel is based off of the combination approach in reality, the financing rate and the reinvestment rate can be different. Specifically, if you are borrowing money to invest, uh, say at 8%, and but you are able to reinvest your cash inflows at say 20% or 15%, then technically these numbers can be different. You can redo the math over here to account for that. But in the end, the combination approach MIRR and the Excel approach will give you the same answer. And so this is how you can resolve the multiple IRR problem using the modified internal rate of return calculation.